Hey everybody, today we're going to be installing the Ring Video Doorbell Pro, and this is the hardwired version of the video doorbell. At this time, it could be purchased from Ring for around $170 or $140 refurbished. So without delay, we'll jump right into the unboxing. Let's get started. Now we'll lay out the contents. We have the doorbell, installation tools, optional corner and wedge mount adapters, three extra different colored bezels, documentation to include a notice. And within that box, we have this pro power kit that attaches to the doorbell, screws and anchors for wood, a masonry drill bit, a wire extension with terminated ends, screws and anchors for masonry applications, a multi-purpose screwdriver, Torx driver, and some extra length of wire. There's also a retrofit kit if you're upgrading from a battery powered older ring doorbell or if you're able to use this for an old regular doorbell. And that's the unboxing. I just wanna go over something quick before we begin. Our original doorbell was originally located here 90 degrees off from the door. We're about to remodel and I didn't like that. They have this adapter right here that allows the ring doorbell to stick out at an angle and I didn't find it viable. So I have moved it to a location next to the door, which I think is more appropriate. That's beyond the scope of this installation, but something to think about. I don't like those adapters on Amazon, both for aesthetics and for functional reasons. The instructions mentioned begin by cutting off power to your doorbell. After you hit the breaker, of course, you could try and ring your doorbell. If it don't ring, you've cut off power to the right breaker. Some folks may have this step down transformer for the doorbell that you could disconnect from this outlet or unplug. We'll start off by taking this Pro Power Kit from our supplies and then open up the cover of the doorbell. We can see the connections here in the middle, transformer, and then there's also a connection for the doorbell for the front of the house. There's also one for the rear, but we're not using that. And these are the two connections we're going to focus on. Just going to loosen these two screws slightly. And then connect that Pro Power module, tightening it down. Which direction the cables go does not matter. Remove the protective covering from the adhesive strip and press it against the side of the box till it's held securely. The doorbell cover is then placed back on, completing this portion of the project. This area has been renovated and I can now proceed with my work. I'm going to start by removing the excess cable to a manageable amount and then I'll strip it and it'll look like any other doorbell cable that people would have. We have two sets of screws here, short screws and long screws. They also contain anchors for concrete, stucco, and brick, as we see here, as well as separate security screws to attach a cover to the ring. We'll grab the main unit now, and there's some protective tape on the front, as well as some stickers on the back. There's no security screw, so we're able to turn it over and just pop out this bezel. And we'll take the main unit now and bring it with us. Having read the stickers, I peel both of them off now clip my cables here a bit shorter. This won't require a long length of cable with the ends added onto it. And I just want to tuck everything out of the way during the mounting portion of the unit. Taking my time because this could be a little bit difficult to do on stucco. Get it up on the wall and level it. And once I got it level, I got fresh paint so a small screwdriver I use through the hole to set the marks as I hold it straight. And there they are. I'll tell you that as I made the marks, I realized that I put them straight down the middle, which means that the bottom anchor would have gone right through the cable that I had installed. We could see that would have been a problem. So what I did was I ended up making new marks that were just about a centimeter and a half to the right of the old ones. But we can see I'm figuring that out now as I'm looking at this, seeing that there's a problem. So we can see that I have set some new marks that do not interfere with the cable itself. I use a provided drill bit, but if you work with stucco, make sure that you drill small pilots where you made the marks, or the drill bit's gonna slide off slightly and it's not gonna line up. With the holes drilled, I inserted the provided anchors into the holes. And then give each of them a couple of gentle taps with a hammer to seat them in. I'm gonna push the cables into the recess because I wanna test fit the doorbell before I continue. The provided tool has a Phillips screwdriver attachment, 
and I used one of the provided screws to start screwing in the doorbell. And obviously I'm going to have to shim this on one or more of the corners because it is stucco, but that's fine. I'll deal with that later. But while I got that screwdriver out, I'm going to loosen these screws slightly on the back of the doorbell. And while it's not necessary, I've chosen to add the provided pigtails onto the end of my cables. So I'm just going to strip the ends of my cables and I'm soldering these on. This came with the kit and it's just a cleaner finish. It doesn't have to be done. I just chose to do it. So I'm going to put some heat shrink on the end of these now. This is the marine grade heat shrink with the glue in it. Very good for outdoors. And then when that's done, I'm just going to smash down my fingers to get the glue to seat properly on there. With that, I have some nice connectors to connect right up to the doorbell. Doesn't matter what direction they connect to because it's AC. And we can see now why I kept just a small amount of slack, which I'll finagle into that recess. I'm going to bend it up and then down and then push the doorbell up against the wall. I'm going to tighten down the screws now. And I know that as I tighten it down, first I'm going to add the top one and then I'm going to add the bottom one. I know that it's going to rock because the back is uneven and I'm going to shim it once I got everything in place. And I can see now as it's tight by rocking it that the low side is the top left side. So that's where I'm going to shim it. So I'm going to loosen up both of the screws here to make some room first. Then I've cut one of the plastic anchors in half which gets progressively larger. And I wedge it in like a shim right up here. Now I'll tighten down the screws again. I'll cut off the end later once I test it. And it's now solid. I did try one on the bottom too, but it wasn't necessary at all. Cutting the ends of the shim off, it's now flush. The mount is now rigid. Everything seems good. So at this point, the breaker would be turned back on to restore power to your doorbell. Or you plug in your doorbell step-down transformer, depending on what you have. Welcome to Ring, the world's most advanced doorbell. Follow the instructions in the Ring app to continue. This is a very good sign that there's power to the doorbell. We then spend the next several minutes deciding which color bezel should go on the doorbell. If we feel like a different color next week, we're just going to accessorize. There you go. We'll pop it on. Good. Okay. Silver it is. And then the official commissioning with the favorite part, the removal of the plastic film. I already have the Ring Alarm, but if this were the first Ring product I owned, I would have to download the Ring app from the App Store or Google Play. Once installed, simply clicking onto the menu on the top left, followed by set up a device. In this case, we'll select a doorbell and then we'll scan our code. It'll ask you if you want to use it for an existing address or to add it to a new address. Mine's existing. What's the doorbell for? I'll say for the front door. And has your doorbell been installed already? Indeed, this one has been installed, so I select it. It then wants to know if we installed the Pro Power Kit. Indeed, I've installed that too. Do we have a mechanical or digital doorbell? Mine's a mechanical one. Then it lets us know that we're going to get an email for a voucher for a free cover for our doorbell, color of our choice. It then asks us to press this button if the light is spinning and we see that it is. And now we join the Wi-Fi network for the doorbell. Wait for it to connect. We're prompted for a request to connect. We click OK. Ring doorbell is it scans and finds my wireless network and I select it. Ring doorbell is connecting to the internet. Just a moment. Rome wasn't built in a day. Your ring doorbell is ready to go. With Ring, you're always home. And now we're done, so I hit got it. And then I hit continue. Just a couple more steps, so I hit continue again. It asks if I want to invite other users, I'll skip for now. It asks if I want to link devices, I'll skip for now. I'll skip the third one too. Now I end up waiting about 10 minutes or so for the Ring doorbell to update its firmware to the latest release. It really took quite a bit of time to upgrade the firmware. But once that was done, I put on the cover plate that my wife had chosen, snapping it on securely. There's a security screw for this in the bag. Flipping the screwdriver head around sets it to Torx. And then that screw we set up in the driver. 
and then screw it into the hole on the bottom. Just snugging it down. Looking through the camera, we see just about anything will set off a notification for this ring doorbell right now. A car driving by, somebody walking by the sidewalk. We're going to need to set up some configurations here to limit this. So we go to close and go to settings. And then we're going to go to our motion settings. And a car driving by already set off a notification. So I'm going to flip that up and hit got it for this motion wizard message. And we can see edit motion zones. We're going to go to this function here. And we can see this light blue border is what's going to set off our motion notification. So I'm going to go and click on that. We're going to move these blue dots around to set up what the perimeter is going to be to set off notifications for this. Just like the cameras for Ring, the program is no different. So I'm going to limit it to my property around this area and around the porch to set it off. So people walking by won't set it off. The cars won't set it off. And then once I got it just right, and I'm going to tweak it. We'll hit done. And we'll hit save. And I should stop that from setting it off when everything happens in my neighborhood. There's a feature here I hadn't seen before. Smart responses. I wanted to check this out. Where the doorbell will automatically reply for you. So you don't have to bother with people. Which is nice. And they got this thing for Alexa. I don't have Alexa. But it does have quick replies. And quick reply messages. And they got canned responses. I love this. We can't answer the door right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, you can do it now. Or we could default right to... <laughs> Sorry, we're not interested. That's the option? We just are. We're not interested. I'm going to leave right there. We'll see how it works, at least for the video. We're going to try it out. Lily's going to be inside and let me know if the regular doorbell will work. So the regular doorbell is working. I've not heard any message. Okay, I guess we'll leave it a message. I didn't hear the full message. I'll try that again. This time I made sure all the alerts were on on my phone so I'd be notified when the doorbell was rang. And we see that I got the notification on the phone. We can't answer the door right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, you can do it now. Okay, we're leaving a message and that's all we're doing, leaving a message. I heard the complete greeting, the speaker in this thing, it, it is not awesome, you know, it, it's tiny. I see value in quick replies, but I am going to shut it off right now, it's not something I would generally use. We'll run it the conventional way. I hit the doorbell, I get a notification, I click it on my phone, I immediately see the camera, and I'm able to talk to the person. In this case, it's me, so there's gonna be a terrible echo. Here's me talking to myself through the camera, a lot of feedback, and yeah, tell them to go away, we don't want any. Obviously it sounded terrible because of that, but they go manual mode. And that concludes this video on the installation and configuration of the Ring Doorbell Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, it helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video in this series comes out, a link will be posted in the top right corner. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?